English nerd herders, listen up! Welcome back, I'm Chelo and I play Captain Xavier, and these are the Captain's Commentaries. Now, I originally had planned to do uh, team tactics for HVZ for this episode, but my friend John specifically asked to be involved in that episode before he gets deployed to Korea, and he hasn't been available to film it, so uh, we've, we'll, we've put it off. So it'll hopefully be next month. But this episode, I'm going to uh, go into further detail about my big plans that I posted the video calling for aid for uh, on Saturday. There was a lot of feedback, a great deal of positive feedback, uh, some strangely personal attacks on my character, uh, but a lot of good criticisms and suggestions, and so uh, a lot of questions. So I'm going to try to flesh it out a little bit more, um, talk about the steps that I've already taken, the steps that I'm going to be taking, uh, how I'm going to make sure to keep people uh, in the loop and explain what's going on, and uh, hopefully make this process smooth. Never goes smooth. Uh, so, what exactly am I planning trying to do? I'm trying to raise money for a down payment for some property. Uh, now, as this is going to be my property, I plan to buy a house and land uh, and with a big shop, and I plan to own it, uh, the vast majority of the money is going to come from me. That's just the way it's going to be. Uh, both from, you know, setting aside money from my real, you know, my full-time job, as well as setting aside some of the money from my ad revenue uh, from the channel. Just doing that, it would take about two years to raise the money, and I would really like to speed that process up. So, I'm looking into additional avenues of revenue. Uh, the first one is I did finally create a Patreon, because people have been asking me to create a Patreon since I created my channel. And at first I didn't want to do it because I wasn't sure that I could gener continuously generate content that people would watch. And that has decidedly been proven to not be the case. I definitely, definitely can. So, I've created the Patreon for those people who really like being a patron of things. I'm a patron of several YouTube channels because I really like them and I appreciate them creating the content that they do, and so I like to support them. Um, so that has now been created. The link will be in the description. It's Captain Xavier Nerf on Patreon. Uh, I have also created a GoFundMe for people who just want to donate large quantities of cash. There are, in fact, people who do that if they find a cause that they support, and uh, enough people said that they would definitely support that if it was an option, so I went ahead and created it. But that isn't going to be the primary source by any means. I, I doubt even, you know, even if you all donated a little bit... Well, actually, if you all donated a dollar, I would have way more than I need. But that I don't expect to happen. Um, and a lot of people have pointed out that that's basically begging for money and shouldn't you give something in return, and other people countered with... Yeah, he gives us the channel. Um... But I, I agree with actually the first group, so there are several other options that are going to be coming out. First of all, there is finally going to be Captain Xavier merchandise in the form of t-shirts with the X-Strike logo, as well as patches with the X-Strike logo. The t-shirts are going to be sold through Out of Darts on his website, outofdarts.com, and the other one is going to, the patches are going to be sold through Foam Blast. Uh, both of them reached out to me actually long before this, and asked, hey, would you be interested in me selling you t-shirts, or would you be interested in me selling the patches? And I said, absolutely. Um, and it's hopefully soon will actually be happening. The patches, I believe the prototypes have been made, and uh, Out of Darts is looking into the t-shirts now that things have settled a little bit for him, that he's got his, his website done. That was a huge drain on his resources and time and all of that. So hopefully those will be coming out very soon, and I will get a, pro, uh, a, a portion of the proceeds. So that's basically just free revenue because I don't even have to organize any of it, which is fabulous. Um, so I will definitely make an announcement when that goes, uh, when those are actually finally available. I am, and this is the one you've all been waiting for, and I'm dreading saying this, I am going to start taking commissions again. Now, before all 75,000 of you email me at once, um, there are a, a, a number of rules that you need to follow if you want any chance of actually getting your commission done. Uh, there will be a link in the description and possibly popping up here somewhere for my video on how I price my commissions. I have a whole channel PSA on commissions, how I price them, and what steps you have to follow for me to even consider your commission. Um, 
So you absolutely need to watch that video. It explains how I do my pricing. And quite frankly, most people tell me my pricing is too low. But I think it's fair, and I'm going to continue to use it. Um, but you will need to do the research yourself. And that is explained in the video what you need to do. Um, you need to figure out what exactly the cost is going to be based on the formula in that video. So I break down exactly how I price things. You need to work out the price. So if you want an upgraded Strife, don't just email me saying I want an upgraded Strife because that isn't enough information for me to do anything with. I need to know what motors you want, what cage you want, what flywheels you want, what batteries you want, what switches you want, what cosmetic stuff you want, what paint job you want. Um, if I decide to do paint jobs. That one's, mm, I don't know, they're very time consuming. Um, but you need to do all of that research yourself and work out an itemized list of exactly what parts you want, what they cost, where they can be gotten, that's an important one, is the, the source, um, and send me that whole list. Because otherwise, I end up having to do all that research. I you know spend an hour, two hours, researching all of the parts that you want, getting all of the costs, putting it all together in a nice, neat spreadsheet, sending it to you, and you going, oh, that's too expensive, I didn't realize, and I've wasted all that time. So you have to do the research yourself. And you may then discover, oh, this is more expensive than I thought. And... Yeah, and that way we're not wasting each other's time because, you know, that's one of the reasons I haven't been doing commissions was I didn't have time, and having my time wasted by people trying to get commissions and then not going through with it doesn't help anybody at all. So, that is on you, but it isn't all that difficult. Most things are fairly consolidated. You can pretty much get everything from out of darts and foam blast, so, you know. But there are some specialty items you might want from somewhere else. Um, and if there are details that you absolutely don't know, or there's stuff that needs to get printed from Thingiverse or whatnot, once you have the majority of it, then we can talk and we can discuss the details. Once it has been established that a commission will be taking place, we're just working out the details, then I can talk, and it isn't a horrible waste of my time. Um, another thing, I can't do them all. I'm going to get dozens, if not hundreds of commissions. I simply do not have time for them all. Up until this point, I haven't had enough need for the money for me to have to, to make the time at all, because I was having much more fun doing videos and stuff uh, than doing commissions. But I need the money! So, um, you get blasters, I get money, everything, it works out for everybody. Uh, but there are going to be ones that I simply can't do, and I am going to prioritize ones that are easier, faster, ones that I can do more of them and get more commissions done. Uh, the occasional really neat big one might be fun, but the bigger it is, the more time it takes, and the more expensive it is, and all of that. So keep that in mind. Uh, there are black builds that I simply will not do. I will not build you a copy of Ire. I will not build you a copy of Tear. I will not build a Straven. Um, but just about anything else I'm willing to discuss. So, um, commission email address is in there. I'm planning to create additional email addresses for different things, so have a whole separate email address for featured fan builds so that I'm not getting everything all in one spot that all gets buried. Um, but I had, uh, yeah, so there will start being different emails for different purposes uh, because otherwise it's going to be a mess. So stay tuned for that. You can start emailing me now. I will start discussing commissions, but you have to do the research first. Watch the video, do the research. Otherwise, I'm just going to delete your email. If you send me an email that just says, I want a copy of Ire, I'm just going to delete it. I'm not even going to respond. Uh, if you have not followed the rules in the commission email at, or commission video, I'm just going to delete your email, and you're going to have to start over. Uh, but I look forward to actually building. I love doing commissions. It's just been a matter of time between my job being ridiculously busy all of last year and most of this year so far. Um, it has been complicated. But the time will be made. I may have to actually start adjusting videos again. So um, Monday Mod Tips has been twice a month. I may cut that down to once a month and fill the other one with an actual build guide on one of the commissions I did. So it'll be a beginning-to-end build guide on a commission. Um, so it still will kind of be Mod Tips, but less of a single tip and more of a, an entire build. Um, I may also reduce K26 to once a month. One, I'm running low on blasters finally. We all knew it was going to happen eventually. Um, and then doing another, you know, build guide on something. Um, and I may quit doing personal builds for a while um, in favor of commissions so that, once again, I can get the, the revenue. And then once the down payment is paid for, then I can go back to how things were before. Um, probably still continue to do as many commissions as I can, though. 
And then sponsorships. Uh, that is the big one. Currently, all the sponsorships that I have been doing have been for stuff. They send me a thing, I do a video on it, I get to keep the thing. But there was no money involved. Um, one, several sponsorship companies have reached out to me about doing actual, you know, big sponsorships, like, you know, World of Tanks and things like that, paid sponsorships. Um, and up to this point, I turned them down because I didn't need the money, and it, I wasn't sure where I wanted my channel to go, and I didn't think it was worth it, worth it to either of us. Um, but I do know where I want my channel to go now. And again, need the money. So, <laughs> I'm going to say that a lot. How is our expensive? Um, so I am, I've got a meeting with one of the companies tomorrow, and if that doesn't pan out, there was another one that was uh, I will follow up on, uh, and we'll see where that goes. Um, hopefully it's not something that, again, that horribly twists and contorts where my channel is and where I want it to go and what I want it to be. Uh, I want my channel to stay more or less how it's been. I enjoy the way my channel is. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy the, the feedback and being able to help modders. Um, but where I want to be able to go with my channel and my life and stuff in general requires funding. So, I don't know how much my soul is really worth. We'll find out. Um, so, what exactly am I am I trying to do to, to explain that a little bit better? Because there were a lot of people that are going, well, he's just asking for money and we don't know what he's after. And that was a very good point. So, I am wanting to buy a house with a sizable portion of land and a really big shop. I want it to be mine, it will be personal, I will get to keep it. So, it, you know, I, it's not like I'm buying property to put a business in, because I'm not wanting to, to really do this as a business. Um, but I'm looking for a house, and the house, the, the one key element in the house that really pertains to any of my YouTube stuff is I want a large enough room for all of my Lego, which needs to be a pretty big room. Uh, but, because right now, my castle setup was shrunk to fit into this room, and my pirate setup was shrunk to the point that I really can't do anything with it at all. It's just too small. Um, and I want to be able to expand both of those to their original size, and I'd love to be able to set up a space one again. Those are my three areas that I love, are Pirate Castle and Space. Um, and that will hopefully allow me to then fully build the castle set up, fully build the pirate set up, and get all of that on my channel, and, and show all of that on my LEGO channel. Because I have a LEGO channel, for those of you who don't know, which is where most of the story time with Captain Xavier is. Uh, there's, like, a dozen or so episodes of that over there, all animated with Lego, so um, check that out. And I'd like to expand that channel some more, because it's another one of my major passions, the building of Lego. Um, the land, I'm like I said, I'm looking for a, a, a sizable portion of land, at least an acre, preferably closer to four. Um, we'll see. Because I want to be able to host wars. That's one of the big issues we have in Nerf, is finding the location to do it. And a lot of it we do in public parks, but that limits what we can do. And we occasionally run into crazy people who don't want us, you know, playing with guns in the park. Uh, and it limits, you know, you really have to be more concerned about realistic looking blasters and gear and, and, and all of that. And so it's a lot easier if you have your own property to do it on. Uh, so I want someplace large enough to host decent-sized wars. I'd like to be able to host at least, you know, a 50-person war. 100 would be cool, but we don't actually have wars that big. But we, we could someday. Uh, so, yeah, I want to be able to, you know, have, like, permanent bases for multiple teams for, like, capture the flag and permanent structures and barricades and stuff like that. Just to, to really make a really neat play field that we can have our wars in. Um, I also want to hopefully have a section of it that is a dedicated... Blaster Tag Association arena, because I mentioned in the previous video that I really wanted to host competitive wars with the, the heavily modified stuff and, you know, actual 5v5 teams of, you know, organized league type stuff, and I wanted that to grow and become national, and it turns out it already is, which is fabulous. I'd vaguely heard about the Blaster Tag Association, but I hadn't realized how well organized it was and how big it was. It's already international at this point. It's fantastic. It is quite literally exactly what I was hoping to create, but it's already been done, so I, again, I don't have to do most of the work. I just have to create, help create the local league. And Out of Darts and uh, Bray and uh, Ryan from Silver Fox all are wanting to do that as well, so we have enough people to really get the ball rolling on that. And again, the location is the hardest part, because if you have to create a mobile arena that you have to set up every time, that becomes a logistic nightmare, whereas if you can have a permanent location, that makes it so much easier. Uh, and it allows you to then host events more often, because you don't have to deal with setting it up and tearing it down. You just The people show up and you have the event. 
So I'm definitely wanting to do that, and I'm hoping to you know spread the um, the awareness of that and have it start starting up in more locations uh, because it's just a really neat concept, as well as hosting you know our own competitive events because it's just really really neat. And then of course hosting other events. I've got a friend who is really into the pirate reenacting community around here, which is fairly big what with being you know port cities and all that. Uh, and she asked, when I mentioned all this to her, she asked, would, would I be willing to host some of their events? And I said, absolutely. Uh, I, I love doing that, too. I did medieval recreation. I, I've done pirate recreation. I've, I love all of that stuff. So, yeah, that's another kind of event that I would hopefully be able to host on my land uh, if, if I end up with enough of it. So, the last one is, of course, the shop, which is the big part that pertains to, to you, uh, my, my viewers, um, I want to make an actual Nerf work maker space where it will have multiple workstations with all of the necessary tools that anybody can come use um, for whatever they need. It's not; it won't strictly be for Nerf because tools are fairly universal in most cases, especially the ones we use for Nerf. Um, and it will be free to use. Anybody who wants to use it will always be welcome to come and use it free of charge. Um, this, I, I'm not wanting to make a business out of the maker space. I want the maker space to be something that anybody can come to regardless of how much money you have. Uh, and most of the parts I want to be able to make free as well, if at all possible, which is the other reason I, I will keep the Patreon going. Uh, once the, the down payment is made, the, the GoFundMe will be, will be over, uh, but the Patreon will remain in order to sponsor and fund the Makerspace for buying motors and springs and, and filament for 3D printing parts and all of that, so that you know, if as long as you have the blaster, and in some cases I may be able to donate the blaster if I have enough of a certain one from Goodwill or whatnot, uh, but more expensive ones, you know, flywheel blasters and that tend to be a little bit harder to come by, but um, I want people to be able to bring their blaster and do everything that they need to do here potentially free of cost is my, my ultimate goal. Now, some parts are more expensive, cages can be expensive, but I can print um, open flywheel cage ones, uh, and flywheels are probably going to be the most expensive part, and I may have to charge for those, um, or may just ask for donations. Currently, when people come and use my shop, they bring me root beer. Um, and as a result, I can't remember the last time I had to buy root beer, which is pretty cool. Um, so that would probably be a standing you know, thing. Bring root beer to dedicate to the shop, or donate if you wish. Um, but I'm hoping that Patreon will be able to fund that, as well as the channel, of course, will continue to fund all of my YouTube stuff. Um... I also want to expand my armor making. I do have all the tools that I used to use to make armor, but there are tools that I've always wanted to get that will both be useful in Nerf as well as that. Um, so I'm hoping to have a large enough shop for things like a multi-ton press and possibly a CNC machine and and uh, additional neat big power tools that I just don't have room for here. Yeah, even if I had the money, I just don't have the space. So that is something. And then, of course, as I said, other uses. Um, you, tools are fairly universal, and I... I, I'm starting to look into the actual true makerspace concept. There, I, I don't know all the details on whether I can, should technically be using that name um, if it's somehow reserved, um, but it's, it, it explains the concept. And I may end up creating it as, as a non-profit or you know, offici officially affiliating myself with makerspace or, or what have you. Um, Sparky Santos has been giving me all sorts of resources on how to go about that and how to you know, start a small business and how to start a, a non-profit and he's dealt with them as well as major um, charities so we'll see where that goes I would rather do it all I kind of rather do it all just by myself because it makes it the paperwork easier but it may be necessary legally for me to actually create a non-profit and that is something that will get looked into and I will update you all um, as things go on on w how I end up truly setting up that space when the time comes. Um, but that is where, that is the, the basic plan is the buying of property. Um, and another, qu one of the big questions that a lot of people raised is why should we? Why should anybody, you know, donate to this? If we don't live anywhere near you, what's the benefit for us? Well, for the locals, obviously, they have the benefit of the space will be readily available to them. And anybody who's traveling through the area will have the option of contacting me and saying, hey, I'm going to be passing through. Can I see the space? Can I use it? Can I, you know... And as long as I'm there and it's not reserved, absolutely, you'll be allowed to swing by. Um, so that is the immediate one. I also plan to hopefully stream as much as possible of what takes place in there. 
because I'm wanting to host larger events. So, like, the birthday party event or the Christmas event, have a group of kids come and mod a blaster from beginning to end, and I want to be able to stream that so that anybody anywhere can watch it and mod along with us. It'll be announced what blasters we're going to be building, what parts you're going to need, what time it'll take place, and then we will go through it step by step with all the kids on their own workstations, all of it streamed, so you'll be able to mod along at home with us. And if you have questions, we will try to answer them, though, you know, if I'm teaching, it's hard to answer comments as well. Um, but if I have somebody there who can be watching the comments and can ask the comments, I can then respond. And um, So that'll be a thing. I also want to stream the, the wars and stuff that take place. I'll be setting up cameras and, you know, possibly drone cameras and all of that so that you can see the the gameplay live, if at all possible. So that stuff that I can't do now that I would be able to do then, that would be, you know, a boon to the channel, I mean, uh, an added bonus to the channel. I would also be able to do potentially better quality videos. One of the limitations I have in this space is I can only make so many modifications to the location because it's rented, it's not mine. I can't, you know, rewire the entire shop for better lighting or anything like that. I've kind of had to makeshift things, and so the lighting's not great, and I can't do permanent camera rig setups, and um, a lot of my Nerf science videos would hugely benefit from having a location that was both larger and that I could build permanent things on, like a permanent shooting range with, you know, markers already set up and camera mounts so you can easily see where angles are and all of that, that I just can't do in the alley because it's it's not mine. Uh, somebody else mows it, and if I've set up, you know, permanent things out there, they're either going to get destroyed or they're going to get in their way, and so... In a lot of ways, the, the quality of the videos could very much improve. At least, I'm definitely hoping they would improve if I had a better location. And finally, it's, this is something that I've, I, I want to spread. I want it to go to more places. People said, well, if you're not in the Seattle area, you wouldn't benefit. True, but I've already talked to people in Minnesota area who are interested in setting up something on this scale, as well as people um, in on the East Coast, as well as in California, I've had at least six or seven people say, I want to do this exact same thing too, you know, let's, I'll be able to collaborate with them, and when, you know, if I can show that, yep, it turns out it works, it is a good model, we can do this, um, I'm hoping it'll encourage more of these to spring up, and then hopefully there will be one in your area that you will be able to go to. So, that is a, a more long-winded, a more, hopefully better explained, answered some questions, hopefully alleviated some concerns. Many of you probably still think I'm a complete schmuck, which is true, so there is that. But there will be further updates as events warrant. I will definitely let you know when the merchandise is available, and I will keep you posted on the whole plans as far as the makerspace, and I will keep you posted on how the actual um, funding is currently going. I, I have some details I need to set up. I need to set up a, you know, a savings account and and all of those sorts of things, and start talking to um, uh, uh, realtors and, and figure out what sort of details I still need to work out. But that is where it stands now. If you have any additional questions, uh, if you have genuine concerns, I would like to know them. If you have genuine suggestions, I definitely want to know them. I have never done anything like this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, all of the links to the Patreon and the GoFundMe are, will be down there. Uh, eventually, links to the merchandise will be down there. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And thank you so much for all the support you've given me so far. It's already been amazing. I would not be anywhere near the point of even considering buying a house if it weren't for you guys as it is. Even if nobody, none of you donated anything, you've already got me to the point where I'm actually able to consider this. And I genuinely, genuinely appreciate that. So thank you very much.